After a night of thunderstorms, Atlantic fritillary butterflies are out feeding on nectar. But they aren't the only hungry creatures out looking for a bite this morning. Yep, the north woods in summer. Deer flies. Good part of it is not seeing anyone else out here in the woods, oddly. But I did just see a black bear. This female with her two hidden cubs were digging in the tall grass in a clearing in this mixed hardwood forest. She conceived them last summer, and when they were born in midwinter in her den, they each were only eight inches long and weighed less than one pound. As I walk this dirt track through a remote area, evidence of other resident mammals becomes apparent. This is wolf scat old enough that nothing much more than hair and bone fragments, most likely from deer, moose, or beaver, remain. Minnesota is the only state in the lower 48 that has always had a viable gray wolf population. Today, the population is estimated to be approximately 2,700 individuals. In this slow motion video footage, you can see the sheer abundance of deer flies here during the summer months. Warm temperatures and long hours of daylight mean incredible productivity, similar to the luxurious vegetation that is taking over the back stairs up to my apartment in Minneapolis. This abundance is why migratory songbirds, like this viri, come north every summer from South America to feed and to raise their chicks. From here I'm going to flash back to about a month ago in the spring. It was a little less buggy then. A nice time to visit a marsh in southwestern Minnesota called Swan Lake. One of the best ways to see and experience Minnesota marshes is by getting out into one in a canoe. And that is exactly what I'm doing this morning. Before even getting into the boat, I am greeted by the familiar liquid conchlery song of male red-winged blackbirds. Males arrive several weeks earlier in the spring and stand sentry over their territory, ceaselessly singing and chasing away intruders. Within that territory, they attract between one, and in extreme cases, a dozen females, each of which builds a nest, lays eggs, incubates, and does most of the feeding of the nestlings. All of this takes place hidden in the cattails. Cattails are frequently eaten by wetland mammals such as muskrats, which also use them to construct feeding platforms and dens. They dig burrows into banks with their front feet. However, in flatland waters, where high banks are not available, they mound up vegetation into a pile and dig a tunnel to the interior. Here you can see some freshly cut stalks, cut down by the muskrat's impressive teeth. Like the muskrat, another aquatic animal with a very interesting shelter is the wood duck which nests in tree cavities near wetlands. The day after hatching, the ducklings climb to the nest cavity entrance and jump to the ground. The ducklings can swim and find their own food by this time, carefully watched over by their mother. This raspy, gurgling buzz sounds more like a rusty door hinge than a bird singing to attract a mate. But in fact, it's a male yellow-headed blackbird singing to the smaller and more cryptically marked female. Unlike red-winged blackbirds, which gravitate to wetland fringes, yellowheads occupy habitat directly over standing water. Yellow-headed blackbirds feed by gleaning insects and seeds from plants and from the ground, and by snatching insects from the air, as seen here. The male yellow-headed blackbird defends a small territory and may attract up to eight females to nest within his area. Females weave a nest from last year's dried vegetation, placing the structure between plant stems and over the water. Living in these same cattails is another bird, which will actually destroy blackbird eggs and nestlings, in addition to those of its own species, 
in an attempt to preserve food resources for itself. The marsh wren, fierce and boisterous at only four or five inches long, is often heard before seen. It clings to wetland vegetation with its tail cocked and legs splayed open. After choosing his territory, the male weaves up to 15 dome-shaped nests, lashing together cattails, grasses, or reeds. Each female, and there may be more than one, lines their nest with cattail down, feathers, and leaves, and lays her eggs and incubates them. Well, speaking of fierce, back to the present and the summer insects. Freezing water last episode, biting insects this time, what could be next? Stay tuned. Before I go, some very exciting news. The bald eagle nest near the lake by my apartment just fledged the first of the two chicks the pair has raised this year. As you can see, the little guy is a bit confused, waddling like a turkey through people's front yards. You'll notice these two huge ancient cottonwood trees towering above everything else. This is where the nest is. The clues of the presence of a family of eagles here range from the dropped fish littering the street below to the constant begging calls of the juveniles. One chick is still up there, and its parents keep coming and going, feeding it. While the other, when I last saw it, was keeping cool under a small tree in someone's front yard. Good luck, little man. <laughs> <laughs>